Normally, the Tab S8 Plus would be the biggest tablet in a Tab S lineup, but this year, Samsung brought us the Ultra, and I gotta tell you, it's really nice. But at the same time, there are some reasons why it's not going to be a great fit for every user. If you're choosing between these tablets, then you've already decided that you're looking for a bigger tablet. The Tab S8 Plus has a 12.4 inch display versus 14.6 inches on the Ultra. And that's a massive difference, both in terms of the amount of screen real estate you get and in terms of portability and ergonomics. From an image quality perspective, both have a beautiful 120 Hz Super AMOLED displays with HDR10 Plus support. We have very dark blacks, colors are saturated and really pop, and the image is very sharp. Now both tablets have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is fantastic for watching video because the image pretty much covers the entire display we're getting very small black bars at the top and the bottom. There is a slight difference in pixel density, so 266 on the Tab S8 Plus versus 240 on the Tab S8 Ultra. But I haven't seen a noticeable difference in sharpness when using the larger Ultra. And everything from navigating around the UI, watching videos, surfing the web, it all looks great. Now, there is one area that frustrated me in terms of image quality, and I'll get to it later on in the video. Now, the resolution of the Tab S8 Ultra is larger at 1848 by 2960 versus 1752 by 2800. That means that you're able to see more content without needing to scroll, and both of them allow you to watch higher bitrate 4K video, which is then scaled down to fit the display. So the larger display of the Tab S8 Ultra definitely has its advantages. It looks spectacular, and it's super fun to watch content on. But of course, there are also some drawbacks, and they're probably not going to be surprising. So the first downside of a big display is that it's, well, it's big, and that makes it significantly less portable if you need to fit it in a smaller bag or a purse. So personally, I'm always using a backpack, so this doesn't actually make a difference other than the increase in weight, which is about 0.35 pounds or 159 grams. And while that's not a super significant difference when I'm carrying it around in my backpack, it does come into play when I'm using the device, especially for certain types of games, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, when we look at biometric authentication, there are no differences between the two. They both offer facial recognition with the front-facing camera, and then an on-display fingerprint sensor. And my experience with both is essentially identical, so I'm not gonna give one the edge over the other. Moving on to the camera systems, Samsung made some significant upgrades this year. We're getting the same rear-facing camera module with both tablets, which include a wide 13 megapixel camera and a six megapixel ultra wide. Both have pretty good image quality and are a noticeable improvement over previous models. The front-facing camera modules are a bit different. So both tablets have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, but the Tab S8 Ultra also comes with a wide 12 megapixel camera. And I pretty much only use the cameras on my tablets for video calls, so camera systems aren't really a huge deciding factor for me, but I wanted to share the differences with you. Now, one super fun feature that both tablets have is auto framing. So essentially the tablets can use the ultra wide camera to identify a subject and then track it as it moves through the frame. They can then zoom in and out to make sure that the subject is always properly framed, and it gives the illusion that the camera is following the subject. Now, if you're always sitting right in front of your tablet for video calls, this is not super useful, although it is still pretty cool to see it make small adjustments. If you're talking to people while you cook, or if you're teaching remotely and you're walking around, then this is a really nice feature to have. Now, as far as the audio systems, both are pretty much as good as it gets. We're getting four AKG tuned speakers with Dolby Atmos support, and even though the speakers are the same size, I find that the Tab S8 Ultra sounds a little bit fuller. I don't know if it's because those speakers are in a bigger chamber, but there's a little less distortion when you play at full volume. Now, full volume is pretty loud, so you're probably not gonna have it at full volume when you're holding the tablet, but because the displays are pretty big, you can definitely put them on a stand and then sit back and watch content. Now, personally, the majority of the time, I'm using one of the keyboard cases that Samsung offers, so I can always have these tablets propped up to watch video. The book cover keyboard slim is a single piece that wraps around the tablet, and it has storage space for the S Pen in the crease. It's a nice option if you're tight on space and if you don't need a touchpad. And the other option is the original book cover keyboard, which is actually two pieces. The keyboard snaps onto the bottom, and then the back of the case is magnetically attached to the back of either of these tablets. 
Now this is a better choice if you want a touchpad, if you wanna be able to secure the S Pen while it's stored on the back, or if you wanna remove the keyboard and then use these two in tablet mode while still protecting the back and the S Pen. You also have better control of the angle of your tablet because the flap on the back is more versatile than the single position on the slim version. Now ultimately you have the same keyboard cases for both tablets, but the keyboard on the cases for the Ultra is so much bigger it's more comfortable to type on. I find that I make less mistakes and that I enjoy using it more. Now, I talked a lot about the S Pen and it's one of my favorite things about Samsung tablets. And the best part is that it's included so you don't need to spend any additional money. Now, I really like the feel of this stylus. It has a soft tip so it feels like you're writing on a pad of paper where the pages compress as you press down. There's also a button that you can assign a function to and since you're getting Bluetooth enabled S Pens with both of these, you can use all the wireless functions and gestures. When we look at processing power, both tablets use the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip and the benchmark performance is virtually identical. Now, if you wanna see how it compares with the iPad Air 4 or the M1 iPad Pro, I have comparison videos for both. Now, when we look at RAM, we start seeing some differences. So both the 128 and the 256 models of the Tab S8 Plus come with eight gigabytes of RAM. With the Ultra, you get more RAM as you increase the internal storage. So the 128 gig model comes with eight, 256 comes with 12, and then there's also a 512 version that comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Ultimately, you're able to get more internal storage and more RAM with the Tab S8 Ultra. Now I have both the 128 gig and the 512 gig models, and I haven't really noticed any difference for any type of everyday task. And even when it came to gaming, which I'll talk about in a minute, the eight gigabyte model was easily able to handle any game that I tried to play. Now also remember that both of these come with a micro SD card slot, so you can increase the internal storage by up to one terabyte. You can use this storage for files, but you can also use it to move some apps from the internal storage onto the micro SD card. Now, it doesn't work with every app, but many of the apps and games that I tried to move were great and they continue to run just as well as they do off of the internal storage. Now, when it comes to apps, there are a lot of great options in the Google Play Store, so you shouldn't have any issues finding apps. Both tablets also come with Android 12 and One UI 4.1, so there are a ton of excellent multitasking capabilities. You can have up to three tiled apps open at the same time, and you can resize this grid so that every app gets the amount of space that works best for your workflow. Now in this context, I'm going to give the edge to the Ultra because the larger display and the higher resolution give you more real estate to work with and make things easier to see. Now both tablets can also boot up in Dex mode, so if you'd rather work with a desktop-like user interface, you're all set. You'll get an actual desktop with icons, a taskbar where you can minimize apps, you can tile windows, have multiple floating windows, and you can even pair up an external display, a keyboard, and a mouse for an awesome dual display setup. Now finally, if you have a compatible desktop or laptop, you can use both of these tablets as an additional wired or wireless display with a feature called second screen. I always bring a laptop and a tablet with me when I travel. It's super quick to set up and it's a great way for me to get a dual display setup when I'm away from home. Now again, using DeX or second screen, I'm going to give the edge to the Ultra because the larger display is even better suited for this type of functionality. And since these two tablets are so capable, I'm happy to see that Samsung increased their long-term support. So now we're getting four years of operating system support and five years of security updates. In terms of battery, we're looking at 10,090 milliamp hour on the Tab S8 Plus versus 11,200 on the Ultra. And I'm a little surprised that we didn't get an even bigger battery on the Ultra. The jump in battery size from the Tab S8 to the S8 Plus is 290 milliamp hour, even though we're only getting a display that's 1.4 inches bigger. Now going from the Tab S8 Plus to the Ultra, we're only going up by 110 milliamp hour, but the display is 2.2 inches bigger. And since they have similar component and specs, it just seems like we could have gotten more. And if you're curious about battery life, I've got something coming very soon. And remember that it will always depend on the types of things that you do. So for example, gaming is pretty much always going to eat up battery life relatively quickly. The actual gaming experience with both is virtually identical since they run the same chip. And even looking at the Tab S8 Ultra with the additional RAM, I didn't really notice any meaningful improvement for the games that I played. 
Now, when playing PUBG on both tablets, you can go to HDR graphics with frame rate set to extreme, or you can set graphics to Ultra HD and frame rate to Ultra. Now, I usually play on either smooth or balanced for graphics and then extreme for frame rate so I can get a fluid gaming experience and extend the battery life as much as possible. Now, one thing that I noticed when playing on the Ultra is that I had to move the tablet farther away from me because the display was so big that I was missing some activity on the edges. Now, I absolutely love the larger display because it's easier to see things, but the tablet does get heavy pretty quickly. So if you play with the tablet on your desk or a pillow or just propped up on a stand, then it's not gonna be an issue. But if you play games that require you to use the gyro, keep in mind that additional weight. Now, I'm not really gonna give either one of these the edge for that type of gaming because it's really gonna come down to personal preference. But one area where I always prefer the Ultra is with my Xbox Game Pass app. In that case, I can pair a controller with both and I can easily play any game that I wanted to. But I love the larger display on the Ultra and it was probably the best mobile gaming experience that I've had on a tablet. Now, moving on to prices, we see a pretty significant difference. I'm going to use the prices off of the Samsung website because they're more standardized, but there are currently some great discounts that you could get if you use the links in the description. Now both start with 128 gigabytes of internal storage and eight gigs of RAM. The Tab S8 Plus sells for $899 and the Ultra sells for $1099. Now the overall performance and user experience is very similar. So it mostly comes down to which display size work best for you and what you plan on doing with your tablet. You're getting a better front facing camera system and a slightly better sound system on the Ultra. Multitasking works better on the larger display and gaming comes down to which games you like to play and how. Now you should see how the Tab S8 Ultra compares with the M1 iPad Pro. Hopefully this comparison was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.